Hello there, it's just now a couple of days to Christmas, so tomorrow is Christmas Eve and I've got three church services to do, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Today there's only one thing on, so I'm going to just finish this off. We had the part come through. This is the Midland 248, so just to remind you that's the Midland 248 that came in for repair with very, very low audio on the transmitted side of things. It's working fine on PA and although this set isn't approved for AM use in the UK it's uh, before it's pre-2014 so it doesn't automatically do that it is actually was set upable and usable in AM so all the speech processing microphone and all that kind of side of the circuitry was working so this was about three weeks ago we did this so I ordered, I came to the conclusion that the Vericap diode had failed. Now Mr Chippy has had to take the screen plate off the bottom, two screen plates from round the VCO, which of course he'll put back when we've proved this works. This has now been on for two days continuously, because this was a set where um, it might work one second and then it might not work, you know, it was like that most of the time it was might not work so I haven't tried this so as I've switched on the recording equipment I haven't tried this since yesterday so it's 18 hours since I tried this radio so it's been powered up all the time I'm gonna go to channel 20 so we're into the test set and hopefully we've got the meter if we just put that picture in picture on let's have a look to see whether wallow whether we actually have a fix here or not one two wallow wallow so let's see what that sounds like i'll just pop this back onto channel 31 it's quicker to do it on the radio than on the handheld Testing one, two, testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Wallow. It's still lower deviation than I would like. But it's consistently staying there. I'll just make sure we've got the test set um, set spot on. Whoops. Tell you what, we'll retune it for channel 31 on the test set. One, two. Wallow, one, two, one, two. So it's about 1.82, which of course is higher than they would send it out of the factory. So what we what we'd got, if you remember, it was down to about 0 0.5 kilohertz deviation, and as you can see, wallow, one, two, one, two, one, two, wallow. It does. It will peak at at, at two. So it's the surface mount component just there so it's a SOT 23 case this was going to be the shortest video ever I was going to have it done in 30 seconds let's just zoom in on that wrong uh, how did I zoom in on the wrong camera because I didn't select the right camera Mr 21 so there's a VCO can goes back round here this area one underneath and that's the deviation control and that is the surface mount looks like a transistor but it's one of these so just put the camera back to its normal position just like that so it's a KDV 251S that took some researching because it wasn't clear from the bit of circuit diagram we got so put a lot of time into this. I've got this in from Taiwan. It was six pounds and something, plus about the same in post. I think it was eleven pounds and tuppence. And of course, people could say, "Well, you could have put a four pound one in, which you got in stock." And yes, we could. But when this is a customer's job, it's got to be as right as it can be. So what's the difference between the S version and the M version? Oh, that's straightforward. It's quite simply that one SOT23 
and the other is TO92M. Mr Chippy No said to me, it's actually laid out also for the TO92M type. Now, I don't know if that's connected underneath, but it looks on the face of it that it is. So, as you can see, 1212, Warlow, testing 12345, we can get it into feedback, there's enough audio to do that. So, there we are. So I just wanted you to have an update on that. I can't send the customer the setback because I want this on test for 10 days. We're going to have this on and off and on and off for 10 days to make sure that it's in working order. I'm going to put a dummy load in the back. We'll put it on another bench um, and we'll just have a handheld next to it to make sure it kind of sounds right. And we'll bring it back on here with the screens fitted um, early January do an on-the-air test if it still works and Bob's your uncle so that's where we were with this Midland and that's it without the screen plates in so still some work to go on that and you've got to say is it worth it and the answer is no it's not the customer would have been better off with the amber screen version to be quite honest which seems to be more reliable um, so I've just had David Quotagius, who often puts comments on here, have come to the door. He's very, very kindly brought me a Christmas card. And he's also brought me a couple of discs and it's CB magazines which have been scanned. So it saves me having to scan my own collection of CB radio magazines. So thank you very much to David for those. And it's nice to look back at the adverts and it's also nice to look back on the BS reviews. For 20,000, this is a wonderful radio. Well, I like them, but I, I think back in the day uh, when everybody and the dog had a radio, they really were awful. So there we are. That's the data sheet for the that. We've covered that. So I think we can... Oh, yeah, I've got some. I've got a backlog of sets to do with which have been waiting for parts. So you won't be seeing videos on them. They're all behind the scenes. Um, so there's, there's that Ranger... Um, little um, one and a half watt or whatever it was uh, 500 milliwatt um, kit built hand portable I do really want to finish that off Christmas day we would definitely be looking at Tate 2000s which Eddie kindly brought um, as, a, as a freebie which was really good of him so I'll be looking at those and I think we might have a Christmas carol on the organ uh, as well <laughs> so very very short update on the Midland 248 so thank you for watching.